All right, so yesterday we learned the hinge theorem. And the hinge theorem said that if an angle is bigger than another angle, then uh, the side opposites um, bigger, right? The opposite, the bigger angle, if, these, if we have congruent sides. So if you look at this picture here, it's a little bit you know, complicated looking, but you'll see we have congruences happening. So this is congruent to this, and that's congruent to that. So all three of those pieces are congruent to one another. And this side, BC is congruent to this side, DE, which is congruent to this side, EF. So we have three triangles with the two congruent sides we're looking for. The other thing I know, um, if you look at this picture, and something you're, you're going to be tempted to do, this kind of looks like um, vertical angles happening here. I'm not sure I want to say that's happening. All right, so I happen to know since this 14 is smaller than this 18, that this angle has to be bigger than that angle. Again, it looks similar, sort of like maybe sort of these are vertical angles. But if I extend that segment a little bit, let me just do that in a different color. If I come off of D, go through E here, you'll see that they aren't vertical angles. All right? Close, but not quite. So be careful that they, they kind of look vertical. Right here also, vertical-ish. They, they look kind of vertical, but if you extend D out, here you can see that it's obviously not vertical angles. So, we have to use the um, converse of the hinge theorem here. So yesterday, we knew angle measures and then sides opposite, bigger, smaller. Today, we're going to use the converse of the hinge theorem, which, I mean, honestly, if you're just solving problems, just as long as you have a relationship, that bigger side, bigger angle, bigger angle, bigger side. All right, that's that, what you need, need to do. If, if you're doing a proof, then it's really important about converse versus the actual hinge theorem. As long as you have this relationship with these sides congruent to these sides congruent to those sides, Bigger side, bigger angle, bigger angle, bigger side. That's kind of what's going on with this theorem. So what I know is that 14 is smaller than 18, 18 is smaller than 21. So this would be the biggest angle, 60. This would have to be the smallest angle, 36, which puts 2x minus 4 in between. in between these two angle measures. All right, we're comparing angles, but again, since 18 is in between 14 and 21, this angle measure, angle DEC, has to be in between 36 and 60. In the inequality rule, the way we write that is we write the smallest angle, 36, is less than the in-between angle measure, 2x minus 4, is less than the biggest angle measure, 60. So that's the compound inequality. And I'm just going to stress this because I, I get year after year after year students don't want to do this. It's always less than. Every single time. Less than, less than, less than. Everything's less than in these problems. When you do an in-between. Smallest number is less than the middle, is less than the biggest. Always less than. Do not use greater than in those inequality statements. My goal in a compound inequality of this nature is I want to get this inside bit here to be x. Okay. Notice this inequality has three parts to it. It has the first, the middle, and the end. So anything I do to any, to any piece, I have to do to all pieces. So if I want this minus 4 to go away, I'm going to get rid of it by doing plus 4. The consequence of changing this portion of this compound inequality by plus 4 is I have to change all parts of it by plus 4. There are three parts. All three parts get changed the same way. If I carry out the math here, 36 plus 4 on the left is equal to 40. 2x minus 4 plus 4. Minus 4 and plus 4 make 0, so we get 2x. And 60 plus 4 is 64. So always get rid of the plus or minus issue first. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by, or all three sides here, by 2. Because again, I want this middle piece here, I want this to just say x, not 2x. So the next thing is I have to get rid of the 2 by division. If I divide one part by 2, I divide all parts by 2. And 40 divided by 2 is 20. The 2's divide out to 1, so we get 1x, better known as x. 64 divided by 2 is 32. 
it says, what are the possible values of x? x has to be between 20 and 32. Okay, that's what this means. If I read the inequality from x to the number, this says x is greater than 20. This says x is less than 32. Again, that's how the compound inequality works. The small number is less than x. It's the same as saying x is bigger than 20. x less than the big number, x less than 32. So as long as x is between 20 and 32, this is true. If we test it out, um, William, pick a number between 20 and 32. 23. 23. So if x equals 23, 2 times 23 minus 4 is 46 minus 4, which is 42, which is a valid possible angle measure for angle D, E, C, right? So that's all we're doing there is we're establishing this is where x can be in order to make this angle correct based on the measure of these two angles, all right? So that's how you do that type of problem. There's one like that on the upcoming test, so make sure you grasp that. But again, small, biggest side, middle side, smallest side, biggest angle, middle angle, smallest angle. That's creature inequality, and then you solve that inequality.